In this episode, we'll discuss how to deal with mistakes. Whether you may be burdened by past regrets or still struggling with the consequences of past mistakes, we hope this episode will be helpful to you. Instead of dwelling on the past, let's focus on living in the present and moving forward. So don't go anywhere. We're going to chat about all this and more. Let's go. I often experience feelings of regret, especially when I don't perform well on stage. But my members and I try to believe that everything happens for a reason. Even if it's not what we had hoped for or if something goes wrong. When I look back on my mistakes after a year or two, I realize that I can learn from them and hopefully achieve better results next time. And when I think about the things that I couldn't do in the past, instead of being disappointed or mad at myself, I know that everything happens for a reason and it was meant to be. Reflecting on the past helps when I come to similar situations. As a group, we try not to let the small things get us down or consume us. We want to continue making music for a long time. Sometimes it's important to adopt an I don't give a f attitude. As long as I haven't caused any harm to myself or others, I believe in a push and pull way of living. I think it's healthy to live by finding a balance between pushing forward and pulling back when needed. Looking back, I used to struggle a lot with anger and losing my temper. Whenever I messed up during a performance, I could not get over this intense feeling of regret and honestly, it felt like I was hurting myself from within. Nowadays though, I feel like the things have changed for me. I've learned to be more understanding and forgiving of my mistakes. Uh, even when I'm taking good care of myself, there are still times when my throat starts hurting or unexpected sickness or things that happen in the way. But instead of dwelling on those moments, I choose to accept them as they come. I've realized that it's not helpful to keep doing the same thing over and over again without considering alternative options. So now I try to take the time to reflect on what went wrong and find ways to improve positively. You know, mistakes tend to fade away with time. What really matters to us is that the performance itself is enjoyable. The feeling of having fun on stage stays with us for a long time. That's why even when we're working on songs, if there's something that seems impossible or really challenging from a theoretical or technical standpoint, we still go for it if it gives us that special feeling. I remember once watching a singer who performed flawlessly and while it was impressive to see that level of skill, it somehow made it less emotional and fun. It's really hard to explain, but it made me feel like they weren't quite human. At the end of the day, we're not that special. Making a mistake doesn't mean the world is going to end. I've learned to say to myself, so what, who cares? Uh, I'll do better next time. Mistakes will always happen to everyone and anyone even a professional singer's voice can crack during a performance. But that doesn't mean all their hard work and progress vanish in an instant. This mindset applies not just to performers like us, but also to people leading different lives. It's good to have a kinder attitude towards ourselves and not overly worry about what others think when we make mistakes. Sometimes we might feel like we're the main character, not only in our life, but also in the lives of other people. But that's not really the case. And I think most people are focused on their own stories and experiences, struggles, whatever they are going through. So let's embrace the idea that it's okay for the main character in the story of our life to make some mistakes. In fact, those mistakes can help us grow and become better. Every protagonist faces challenges, both big and small and it's through overcoming them that they become stronger individuals.
As an individual in a profession that attracts a lot of attention and admiration, I feel a sense of duty to be a good example. But of course, along with all my good quality, I have flaws too that I know I can't hide. Even though my job requires me to show my face and showcase it to the world, and it's easier access for people to know who I am and what I do, I honestly don't feel like it's anything special than another job, than somebody else's job. Um, we always say this, that the music is what's special, and the artists that sing the music just happen to be messengers of the special music. Um, just like anyone else, I honestly like going out to eat, spending time with my close friends, having a drink or two. And if I were to fall in love and have a partner, I would go on dates with them, just like anyone else would with the right partner, the loved ones. And I honestly feel like there's nothing wrong with that. I've also started to think that I really just don't care about what others think about me. If the four of us think of ourselves as celebrities that comes with a lot of restrictions, instead, we want our fans to see us like siblings or friends. If we become more famous and successful in the future, of course, we might feel differently. Maybe excited about being famous, but it wouldn't change the fact that we're not extraordinary or outstanding people. When we first started out, I didn't have this mindset. Um, there were moments when we felt unsure of our true identity. We had to be really cautious and mindful of our actions. I fell into a state of depression because I had this obsession with being a flawless person who only had a positive impact on others. You know, the people we see on TV or social media seem perfect because they're only showcasing what is perfect. But we all know that nobody is perfect. I'm a big fan of the book Love for Imperfect Things. It teaches us that nothing in the world is perfect. For instance, let's say we release the song and someone comments, this song is perfect. But as someone involved in the creation process, if I listen closely, I might notice a slight offbeat rhythm or off-pitch notes. I believe it's those small imperfections coming together that makes it appear perfect. Instead, I think it's really important to acknowledge that perfection doesn't really exist and to show our imperfection to others is what makes us perfect. We're just regular people not performing because we're superior to our listeners. I'm not special, nor am I flawless. I'm not someone's idol. I'm simply a person who can hopefully bring joy to others through singing, our music, our songwriting. Music itself is incredible. It holds a very, very unique power with energies, emotions, memories, and experiences it's truly amazing how music can touch people's lives. We're here to sing and share that message with you all. Through our music, we're simply expressing the ideas and thoughts that we want to share. It's a way for us to convey what's in our minds using instruments and voices. We're grateful to have fans who appreciate our unique way of expression, which motivates us to keep creating. So, we're always thankful for their support. When people listen to our songs, whether they're feeling happy or sad, it's really gratifying for me when they're able to create memories or just feel happy listening to our music. I think they can really connect with the emotions that we put into our songs. And that's why making and singing our songs feels so fulfilling. It's like a special exchange of positive energy between the Rose and the listeners. And that's why I believe music is so powerful, amazing, and beautiful. I don't have a specific moment that I want to go back to in the past. And we do. I believe that all the choices and decisions I've made have shaped who I am today. Even the bad choices have played a part in building my character. So I don't want to change any 
of the choices or decisions I've made up to this point. But of course, there are some really good times that I wish I could experience again. I don't want to go back in time because I believe everything has happened for a reason and everything in the past has shaped who I am today. Even though I might have some regrets, I feel like it's okay to have them. However, I do sometimes wish I could revisit the past and relive those memories and emotions that I can't feel anymore. Like the first time we enter the practice room or the excitement of our first performance, I feel like as time passes, those feelings become a little blurry and it makes me feel like I'm getting old, which makes me sad. I think there are others who also struggle with past mistakes or regrets. I often tell my younger brother and friends, so what? I think blaming ourselves won't change what happened. It's in the past. If we make a mistake, we should learn from it and try our best to avoid repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Otherwise, we won't be able to move forward. To face challenging moments, overcome them, and strive to become a better version of ourselves. I feel like that's what we all want at the end of the day. I believe the reason people get caught up in the past is because they have unresolved issues from the period in their life. It's almost like homework you never finished. It leaves a lingering feeling inside them. However, I think it's important to revisit those moments to address that lingering feeling. You can recreate a similar situation or imagine it in your mind. It might be difficult and you may not want to revisit the pain or trauma, but it's necessary to go back to that point and reflect on what you missed, what problems you couldn't solve, and what you wanted to do. It won't change the past, but at least you can say that you've made an effort. When I adopt this mindset, my regrets and lingering feeling about the past diminish significantly. If you ignore the feelings from that time and leave them unaddressed, they will remain unresolved and keep building up inside of you. Eventually, they may repeat themselves and turn into a somewhat of a traumatic experience. That's why I think it's important to revisit the past. And sometimes as you grow older, you might realize that you have difficult moments from your childhood that you haven't dealt with. If you don't address these emotions early on, they can become complex and make it difficult to trace where the origin of your negative feelings came from. When you can deal with your mistakes, it can be really helpful to talk to others about them. I used to keep my mistakes and secrets to myself and never shared them with anyone. I was afraid that if I talked about my flaws, weaknesses, and mistakes, people would judge me or think less of me. However, as my trust and my members grew, I started sharing these embarrassing stories with them. Surprisingly, it wasn't as bad as much I imagined, and it actually got easier over time. When I shared my story openly and honestly through my mindset last time, it made me reflect on my past traumas. I really wondered if it would be okay to share my story with listeners that really don't know me as a person, um, that are not involved in my everyday life. But surprisingly, it brought me a sense of healing and harmony. Um, by opening up about my experiences, I acknowledged that they happened and I gained a better understanding of my own negative feelings that were hidden really, really underneath many, many blocks of the past. And this allowed me to evaluate myself more objectively and take the next step forward. The same goes for when other people make mistakes. If someone is blaming themselves for a mistake they've made, I think I will tell them the same thing I tell myself. Sometimes someone in our crew will make a mistake, but I understand that it's because they wanted to do better. So I say to them, it's okay, no matter how many mistakes you make, I'll be there for you. The most important thing is how 
they view their own mistakes. Your own mistakes don't change the world or ruin your life. Our brains have a way of forgetting things we don't want to remember because it's a survival instinct. With time, those mistakes will feel like inconsequential episodes. If one of our crew members makes a mistake, we always let them know that our trust is in each other and that it will never fade away just because of one simple mistake. I usually say to them, you're already part of our team, so a few mistakes here and there won't change how I see you. I'll be patient. I'm very confident in you. I could wait for you to improve. Like we could all improve. We're not robots. We're human beings. So we are okay to make mistakes and not be perfect. And instead of being too hard on ourselves, it's more productive to find ways to make less mistakes in the future. Everyone has their own pace, but as long as we hold on to our sense of hope and strive to improve little by little, it's okay. I understand that it's difficult to apply this mindset to ourselves, but even mistakes and regrets that feel like the end of the world can turn into something that'll make you laugh after a few years. These days, I make sure to cherish the small and simple joys I experience when spending time with the people I care about. Even before we step onto the stage, we always remind ourselves, let's feel it. Sometimes, when I look back later, I forget what exactly made me happy. So now, I consciously tell myself, I'm happy, I'm satisfied. I try to be aware of the positive emotions I'm feeling in the present moment. These days, I make an effort to find things to be grateful for. It brings me happiness to be able to appreciate every single moment and find things to be thankful for. I feel the happiest when I collaborate with a group of people who share the same purpose and goal. Whether it's creating an album or something else, we all have our eyes set on the same destination with a unified mindset. Even if we don't achieve the exact outcome we wanted and we aimed for, I believe the journey itself and everything in between is what's incredibly enjoyable and satisfying. Happiness, in my opinion, resides more in the process rather than just the end result. But I can't deny that a positive outcome would make me even happier. There are probably hundreds of words in English language to describe your emotions. Happiness, sadness, anger, gratitude, anxiety, etc. Sometimes it may feel like your emotions are out of your control. But I hope that we can all work to try to use more of the positive words rather than the negative ones. You know, every time we have an opportunity to freely speak about our fans or how much you care, we always say we love you in a mischievous way, but we really mean it. If there's anyone out there willing to share a moment with us, we sincerely want you guys to enjoy the journey as much as we do. Let's feel it together, Black Roses. Welcome. I really feel like the only reason we could sing, travel the world, um, perform is because of our fans, Black Roses. And honestly, we say this all the time. We want to thank them and we want to show our appreciation by just keep doing what we do. This is our mindset. 